When you walk through the TV section at a store and nobody's standing near the OLEDs anymore, they're there, sleek, still brilliant, but fewer people are stopping to stare. It's not that they've gotten worse, it's that everything else around them caught up slowly like moss growing around stone. Now people wonder, is OLED finally slipping? It's a fair question, and one that feels heavier than it sounds because OLED was never just another display. It was the one, the black level king, the cinema lover's favorite, the panel you saved up for, waited for, and now you scroll headlines, and the whispers are getting louder. Micro LED is the future. QLED finally wins, OLED can't keep up. OLED is dead. But here's the thing, that story, it's not over, not yet. In fact, it might not even be halfway through. Let's pause here and rewind just a bit. OLED, organic light emitting diode. Each pixel powers its own light. No backlight, just pure controlled. Precision, that's why the shadows hit different. Why space scenes in a movie theater feel like floating in nothing. For over a decade, OLED has been the quiet standard for excellence, but that excellence came at a cost, literally and technically. Large OLEDs are hard to build, especially at sizes above 77 inches. Scaling up means higher failure rates during production. That means fewer working panels per batch, which means more expensive screens for you and less room for companies to profit, and companies they notice. While OLEDs fought for perfection, LCDs were catching up. Slowly at first, better local dimming, quantum dot layers, mini LED backlights. Then suddenly those LCDs stopped looking like LCDs. To the average eye, they got good enough. Good brightness, good contrast, punchy colors, and much cheaper margins. So now from the boardroom's perspective, a shift is happening. Not because OLED failed, but because something cheaper has gotten almost as good and is easier to sell in bulk. If that sounds familiar, that's because it is. VHS beat Betamax, MP3 crushed CD, LCD squashed plasma. Technically better rarely means more popular. Mass production decides more than most of us realize. So maybe OLED's time is done. Not quite, because underneath the headlines and the hype are people, real buyers, people like you who don't make decisions based only on specs, especially when it comes to something as intimate as the screen you live your evenings by. And what those people want is still shifting. Brightness is a conversation, especially in rooms flooded with daylight. In that race, OLED struggles. Mini LED can now hit 2,000 nits or more. OLED, even upgraded with MLA technology or EVO tuning, often stays below half of that. But look again, not every room is a showroom. A lot of people don't watch TV in the afternoon with the curtains wide open and the sun reflecting off every surface. They wait until evening. They dim the room. Maybe they put on a movie or let a playlist of YouTube videos roll until sleep kindly takes over. In that room, OLED wins. You feel it in the way text becomes effortlessly legible. In the way, fire looks less like an image and more like an event. In the way, black leaves room for imagination. The thing is, not every buyer wants brightness. Some want depth, silence, cinema. But there's still pressure, real pressure. Even LG knows this. That's why they've spent the last few years pushing boundaries with technologies like micro lens arrays, brighter OLED panels, and even hybrid QD OLEDs to finally bridge some gaps. Emission layers are purer now. Efficiency is going up. burn in still a concern. Yes, but smaller now. Panels are learning how to heal. Uniformity getting smarter. Heat management getting sharper. But change isn't just about fixing the old. It's about making way for the new. And that's where micro LEDD comes in. Now, micro LEDD is big talk, self isive like OLED, no burn in, insane brightness, perfect blacks. Basically, the theoretical best of both worlds, but it lives in theory mostly. Right now, the cost, size, and manufacturing scalability are hurdles you could drive trucks through. So until that tech matures, maybe in five years, maybe longer, OLED still stands, maybe not in the spotlight, but firmly. 
like a seasoned artist whose influence is still obvious even when the younger trend has the mic behind closed curtains. For the folks who still watch their movies with the sound bar off for quiet dialogue and no distractions, OLED still delivers where it matters. And sure, QDLCDS can be flashy. Micro LEDD might go clean, minimalist, near perfect someday, but OLED, OLED feels like something. It doesn't shout, it listens. So if you're wondering whether it's a bad time to buy OLED, the answer is harder than a headline. If you want pure performance in a bright room and you don't want to stress about panel health, something like a solid mini LED TV might suit you better. But if what you want is mood, deep viewing, and that almost invisible boundary between film and real life, it still makes sense. OLED isn't dead. It's just moving, shifting sideways into more refined territory where it's not trying to win the race for every living room. It's becoming more selective, more confident in what it does best, and what it does best still matters. Somewhere in the middle of all these hardware wars, the ANITs, the zones, the acronyms, we forget the simple truth. People don't buy specs. They buy feelings. They buy the emotion of a scene in perfect shadow, the clarity of a game environment that wraps around them like weather. They buy the memory of watching something that gave them goosebumps and wondering if the screen had something to do with it. That's where OLED still holds the high ground. Because even when you stack up the charts, OLED doesn't always win. Not in raw brightness, nor in size per dollar value. But nothing else makes a black feel like that. That's the one thing no other display has stolen yet. And without true black, color has no anchor, no restraint, no balance. That matters more than people think. Now let's talk real world change. Where is it actually moving? Yes, OLED isn't on an aggressive market climb anymore, especially in regions where size is king. Jumbo screens 85 inches and up are exploding in popularity, and that's a problem for OLED right now. It's expensive to scale without losing yield or margin. In a world that demands more for less, that's tough. But here's the quiet truth. OLED was never made for everyone, not in its current form. The buyer base is shrinking, not because demand is dying, but because expectation is shifting. Convenience, size, brightness, durability. People want a screen that does it all. Family movies in the day, games at night, ambient loop backgrounds when guests come over. Audi isn't that kind of TV. It's special, but not versatile. At least not for the average home. And that's okay. Not every product needs to chase mass appeal. The brands, they know this. Samsung, for example, once walked away from OLED back when LG was leading the charge. But now they're back, blending OLED with QD tech for punchier color and slightly better brightness. Sony followed suit. LG stood firm. Now TCL and others are sniffing around too. If OLED were dead, no one would invest a billion dollar panel plant into it in 2025. What most people don't realize is this. OLED survival isn't emotional. It's contractual. OEMs and panel suppliers, especially in Korea, have already sunk unimaginable money into manufacturing lines, deposition processes, clean room tech, IP licensing. Walking away isn't easy. It would be abandoning years of R&D, partnerships, mass production, calibration, careers. This isn't a well, it's underperforming, so let's kill it moment. It's more of a how do we stretch its relevance while we wait for the next thing to be ready moment. And the next thing, micro LEDD. Not there yet, not even close. Right now, micro LEDD is modular, clunky, hard to install, and very, very exclusive. It's a concept car, not a driveway purchase. The tech world hypes it, but its real-world presence is barely measurable. OLED still fills that in between. Now QDLCD, often sold as high-end QLED TVS, is trying to reach similar heights. And sure, it does help narrow the gap. Great for sports, excellent for bright rooms, but something's missing when you dim the lights. Detail gets crushed, light bleed creeps in, black bars glow. That's not an emotional screen, it's a technical one. OLED still makes you feel seen in a scene, like you're there. Gamers know this too. Response time. OLED beats. Most displays by a mile. That instant pixel transition helps not just accuracy, but immersion. When you're swinging across a cityscape or ducking into a stealth encounter, it's the invisibility of the monitor that makes it immersive. 
OLED disappears faster than LCD ever could. Is it perfect? No. Burn-in exists. Not everyone wants to babysit panel care settings, vary their content rotation, or use screensavers religiously. Even with pixel shift tech and LG's logo dimming algorithms, risk exists, especially for use cases like news tickers, sports channels, or gaming UIs on screen for hours. And maybe that's the most honest reason OLED is facing pressure. Modern life isn't cinematic. It's multitask, screen shared, split viewed. Most people run their TVs like their phones. Many things at once all the time. That leans into tech that's more forgiving. OLED makes you slow down. And maybe not everyone wants that anymore. Or maybe they never did. But not all screens are supposed to chase trends. Some preserve them. There's a kind of buyer who wants OLED and honestly always will. The ones who dim the room even at noon. The ones who only watch with subtitles off. The ones who still buy Blu-rays, who use filmmaker mode unironically. Who care not just what they're watching, but how they're watching it. They are the reason OLED will never vanish. Just contract refocus, settle into its role as a premium display for the discerning. Ironically, that's what makes it even more valuable going forward, because mass market isn't the only direction worth moving in. Prestige always has a seat at the table. Just ask vinyl, mechanical watches, paper books, and tube amplifiers. OLED belongs with them now. Not outdated, but mature. You might not see them every day, but when you do, you notice. So the next time someone says OLED is on the way out, ask them this. What's replacing it, not just in name or spec or trend, but in feeling? Because until something else can make a night scene feel like a memory, OLED still belongs. They want one that's smart enough to work. Before you go, hit that subscribe button. We don't just review, we expose. From the hype to the hidden failures to the tricks brands hope you'll never question. So hit like tap subscribe, next gen picks, and join thousands of smart shoppers who already know smart spending starts with asking smarter questions.